education. Um, but what, if this is a speech I think in 2009, what part of our say said, the first part, he said, um, they no longer, the U.S. can no longer see themselves as a Christian nation. They're a Jewish nation, they're a Muslim nation, they're all of this. And if they were even to see themselves as a Christian nation, which Christianity were they to use? Okay? And, um, and then he went to say, um, and uh, what, how do you use the Bible? Would you, um, to, if you were going to um, you know, develop certain policies, would you use the Viticus, which says you mustn't um, wear certain kinds of clothes, or that you must stone a child, or would you use the sermon on the mom, which is so radical that the defense force tried to do it something or the other, so that's where they are. And then he went on later on to say, you know, um, if, uh, you know, the importance of having the biblical values translated into universal values, so it's not just what I believe, because I believe it, but that they can uh, withstand the scrutiny of reason. And then he went in, for example, to talk about the, the daddy from Abraham, and says, imagine if Abraham were with his son today, and was about to kill his son immediately, you know, you, you have to be arrested, you have to call the children, so to stay with the son from him, etc. So, you know, how can you talk about, um, you know, religion and Christianity and the Bible and society? What do you think about that? Do you think that in any way represents persecution or do you think that's actually I any? Mean, what do you think? Two quick comments. Well, I was going to say that um, for a long time, not just in the last few years, certainly in the U.S., they have been trying to basically silence the church, trying to the quote unquote separation of church and state thing so that you can no longer pray in public schools. No longer have nativity scenes at Christmas. It's no longer you no longer say Merry Christmas. You say Happy Holidays and so on and so forth. So for for a long time in the U.S. You can say that in the Western world, in it's not violent, but it still is. Is, is effective in trying to stifle the church. And what he's saying there just doesn't even work. So, what we have, alright, firstly, what he actually made some extremely good points. Very, very, very solid points that the church needs to take seriously. In the sense that, you know, one of the things he said is that we have to begin to appreciate that we are not a society that has the luxury of simply saying because we believe this to be so, then everybody must accept it as so. That we must be able to translate the Bible in a language that helps people to appreciate the worth and the value of what God says. You get it here? One, one book that I've always loved, the writer titles the book, The Bible Makes Sense. I've always loved that title. Because I believe that's what we have a responsibility to do as, as church. We have a responsibility to understand. And that's why we are here as the Bible study. I should be here, but you see, it's always a problem having Bible study in churches. Because we should be understanding the word so we can translate it into life. So people could appreciate if God say, for example, wait until you're married, it's not because just God say, but God is a God. And there is wisdom in what God says. Here is the wisdom. This is why, as a nation, this is what we must do. Are you getting me here? So that we have to begin to spend time with the world, in the world, to understand it, so we can help people appreciate this book is not a book for yourself. No, we get that. You get that? Yes. You get that? Then they're going to be 
and we bring our Sunday mornings. So next time, I can do to in church. Well, that's an interesting question because, in a sense, the church is supposed to be doing self. You're right. That's an interesting point. So it is not just secular society that's persecuting the church, but the church is destroying itself. And so it is important that uh, it is important for us to consider. And I think some weeks ago, and I think that's a, we'll go back, go back to that reference, Jude. I think I made reference to Jude, where Jude says that uh, there was some who were kept in amongst you. Unaware, remember that? We'll go back to that if necessary. He says, you are in essence destroying the church from inside. So sometimes the persecution is not just from outside, but even the enemy has planted those inside to create and destroy the church. So the problem, one of the main problems with why I shared that presentation is not the good things about it. And I think I remember sharing with you, a lot of times it's not the good things that make the difference. It's the other part of it. He could have made all the points he made in a manner that respected the validity and value of both the Bible and the Christian faith. Uh, but the approach he used was to mockingly make his points. Now it's two different approaches. So the approach was a way to demean scripture. And very often what people do in today's society who try to attack the church and the integrity of the Bible, in order to demean scripture, they go to the Old Testament. And they misrepresent and misuse the Old Testament so that they could say this book ain't more than Listen to what the Bible says. So they no longer see the Old Testament descriptively but prescriptively. Ah, we are getting that? You sure you're getting that? Yeah. Because they then see the Old Testament as a book, because it's the Bible, say this is how it must go, rather than a book representing a journey of a people who are seeking to understand God. as it were to the Jews. He said, the law that you all were trying to understand, Jesus came to fulfill it, give you the fullness of it, make it complete, so you could understand properly what God's intention really is. Matthew 5, let's look at a couple of examples. And you, I, I, I'm sure you may have shared this with you before. So, let's go first to verse 17. Somebody read that. Think not that I have come to destroy the law of God. I have not come to destroy it, but to fulfill it. Verse 21. Do not pray that to the same to those of which you can use. Do not pray that. And do not pray that you should never be dead. 22. Thank you. 
things that are presented, whether by the presenter or by the media. Because they don't present, firstly, by affirming the legitimacy, the validity, the value of marriage. Are you with me? So they're not sharing a concern, quote unquote, in the context of preserving marriage. The, in, the, the way in which it's presented is in order to say the church has to change its stand on marriage. That's subtly what the command is. Are you getting what I'm coming from? Yeah. So, for example, I, I said to somebody, I said, the other day when I, when I was in Guyana, the domestic violence campaign, they had a guy who presented a document. So I was on one of the panel because they brought together a couple of persons because one of the nation by training. So I saw the document. I said, we can ask you this thing. Then some of the pastors and I said, well, who we could do we take it and we will doctor it for all the needs, etc. But some, you know, anyway, I realized that everything now is labeled domestic violence. So I made the point of the post, I said, you have to be so careful because there's no, there's, I don't know there's a single couple married for 34 years who haven't had to go through some serious challenges and difficulty to get to that point. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I guarantee you, you get any couple that went through some serious challenges and difficulty, and you put those challenges and difficulty by alongside today's description of domestic violence. And I guarantee you, what it will suggest is that every marriage has been a marriage of domestic violence. Are you getting me here? <laughs> but what allowed them to be at a point where they, they have no been able to experience God's plan and desire for marriage is being able to grind through and endure difficult and challenging times. If you follow what they are alluding to, every time a marriage has some real difficult patch, people start to be maybe even abusive in what they're saying. Hello? You, you need to get home. Are you getting where I'm coming from? No, I'm not suggesting in any way that the church is all promoting beating in relationships and all of that. Don't get me wrong. I'm concerned about the way in which people present material relative to the church's position. They don't encourage, promote, what the church seeks to say they are represent, but what they do, they try to use bad experiences and examples to devalue the whole thing. Again, to neutralize the church, what systematically happens in society today is everything that the church represents that is noble and good, you guarantee their deliberate ways in which the attempts are made to disregard it, devalue it, and disrespect it. Are we together? Mm. <coughs> so, let me move on. Let me move on. Yes, brother. What's wrong?